Oi, oi, dudes and dudettes, how is it going? My name is Sean, aka Skelly, aka the Rogue Adventurer. Now, what we're going to be doing today is having a little DIY session. We're going to be making a hammock underquilt. What's a hammock underquilt? It's basically a little bit of kit to keep your buns a bit more toasty while you're out hammocking. And we all like toasty buns. The reason why I'm actually making this is because when you're laying in a hammock, any sort of cold air or wind that comes underneath you wicks away and saps all that heat from your body. Now if you don't want that to happen you can always use a roll pad or a little lay mat uh, thermo rest thing but under quilts are usually the way to go. Now a down under quilt is what we're going to be making today usually clocking at well over a hundred. Now I don't know about you guys but I can't afford that kind of thing so we're going to have a go at our own little DIY version. I have got a feathery down duvet that I'm going to be converting into this hammock under quilt. Right, so the first thing we need to do is extract all of the down feathers and everything from inside that duvet. So what I need to do is bring in my mate Henry. So all I've done from the inside of my mate Henry here is ripped out his little sack on the inside and um, we're just going bareback with the hoover, sucking all the feathers in through here, collecting them in the little reservoir in the bottom of here and then we'll switch that over to some little bags that I've got laid out separate. Right then, so carefully, let's snip this bad boy open. Right, and so, as you can see, we've got a big old tub full of fluff. Ooh. I have to be really careful with this because it will start just flying everywhere. Helen, stop making noise. Sorry. Stop making noise. It's so annoying. Oh, wait. You better. Whoa. That's aggressive rude. Right then guys, so I've pretty much extracted all I need now for my underquilt, or I've, I've guessed I'll need. I've also saved a little bit extra just in case I need to make it a little bit more warm and toasty so I can stuff extra inside there. I've separated them all into little separate dry bags, all air tights and other down and feathers fly around everywhere. Really good tip to do that. Uh, it just makes things a little bit easier. Right then dudes and dudes, let's have a little run through of all the ingredients we've got to make our tasty little underquilt. First up, we have got our shell. So the outer shell and the inner shell. For the outer shell, I'm going to be using a black Pertex. For the inner shell, I'm going to be using a purple. Uh, this Pertex fabric uh, I've got here is about 64 inches wide, I think. The Pertex that I've got here uh, is not ripstop. I'd recommend trying to get a ripstop Pertex if you can, but don't worry if you can't, I'm not going to be using one right now. But any fabric you have, definitely make sure you get downproof or calendared material. Next up, we've got some bug net. The finer the bug net, the better, because this stuff is going to be separating the down inside your underquilt. One inch thick nylon webbing. I'm going to be using maybe about 20 inches total. We're going to be using some elasticated shot cord. Now this shot cord stuff uh, is probably about four mil thick. Next up, we've got some two mil Dyneema cord. I bought this on eBay in a 50 meter roll. Fabric scissors. Wee! Same measure. Fire. We've got some polyester thread here. Uh, I recommend getting some Gutterman or Gutterman, however you pronounce it. We've got some little pins here just to hold everything in place and stop it slipping around. Also got a little bit of chalk which you can use just to mark on fabric. A chalk snapper. Get a sewing machine. Don't do it by hand. You'll be there for seven years. There's no point. You'll waste all your hammocking time. You want to be able to bust it out nice and quick. Uh, and I'm probably only going to be using a single stitch for the main body of the underquilt, maybe a uh, zigzaggy stitch for the nylon little tabs I'm going to be using in each corner. Right then, so step one is going to be to lay out the fabric, measure it and give it a little bit of a snip. I've decided on going for 72 inches overall length once it's completed uh, and for the inner fabric it's going to be 48 centimeters, 
centimeters. No, that's like this long. Let's not go for centimeters. 48 inches uh, wide, and the out fabric is going to be about 60. Uh, and also, you need to take into account about two inch seam allowance. So add two inches onto all those values, uh, and that's what we're going to be doing. So let's crack on. Right then, guys. So we're pretty much done all cutting now. What I'm going to do next is sew a hem around the perimeter of the entire fabric, probably about half an inch. Right, guys. As you can probably see. I've done a nice big hem around the outside, the entire thing, both the purple and the black. Uh, not the neatest job, but it'll work for me. Right guys, so what I've decided to do here is on each corner of the purple fabric, I've sewn like a, a one inch little triangle in each corner. Uh, and then what's going to happen is I'm going to line up this fabric here, I'm going to attach a tab on here as well. Uh, for the prusik loops to hook onto uh, and then the idea is once uh, I sew this together and got the baffles in place I can fold it over and it creates like a nice little channel where the shot cord can come through from each corner that way and that way over the top of the black and then obviously this is going to be on the bottom underneath it when it's done. Right then so what I'm doing now is I'm making my baffles now my material I've got is not long enough to actually go the full length of the under quilt so uh, what I've been doing is cutting them pretty much half the length of the underquilt. So I'm just going to attach two baffles together uh, to make these work hopefully. And the way I've been doing it is folding this big roll of fabric in half and half and half and half and half and then measuring out about the same width for each one I'm cutting. I think I've gone for about just over three inches, give or take. Right then guys, so what I'm doing now is I'm measuring 6 inch intervals from baffles all the way across this material here. I'm going to sew on uh, my bug net material, uh, which I've already cut up. I'm going to be laying these down. Along that line I've just made, I'm going to be pinning it all the way down to make sure it stays in place. Uh, and then I'm going to sew down each of them lines. Uh, I might be here a while, but I'll catch you in a bit once I've done the entire length of it. Peace. So what I've done over here guys is because my material which I bought for my bug netting I only bought a metre of it uh, I've not got enough to go the full length of the material so I'd recommend buying two metres of it uh, that way you don't have to sort of patch together uh, two separate bug netty baffle things. Uh, I'll show you what I mean over here. So as you can see here, what I've done is connected these two bits together. Well, I'm going to be connecting them together uh, and sewing just straight line along the top. What I'll probably have to do as well is sew these two baffles uh, in a straight line this way just to stop any feathers getting out from in between there as well. So what I'm doing now, guys, is literally just sewing these baffles straight on. Uh, what seems to be happening is the little pins uh, which I've been using uh, have been kind of slipping out of the material just because it's so slippy uh, so I'm kind of just freeballing it uh, just holding it against the line which I've already made uh, and going for it uh, it's turned out okay so far I think uh, we'll just have to see Ooh, right then, one baffle down, seven more to go, Ugh. this is what it looks like so far, and then obviously in between the edge and that baffle there, we're going to have some lovely sort of floppy stuff. Right then guys, so as you can see, I've pretty much finished the baffles now, uh, next step is to saw four little tabs onto each corner to attach the suspension to uh, and then we're going to connect both the shells together the inner and the outer shell so let's crack on right then guys so we're going to start with the tabs first of all so i'm going to measure about probably seven inches on these tabs uh, and what i'm going to do then is cut it in half down the middle because i don't want it as thick as this and then sew them onto the inner shell uh, probably where i'm going to be using my lighter is cutting them straight down the center uh, as central as i can get it 
and then melting the edges to make sure that it doesn't fray or anything. Before that, let's just burn the edges here. If you can see. Get it nice and melted. And then I'll press it down on the table. You'll usually end up with something that kind of looks like that. Whee. And usually what I do then, uh, any bits that stick off the end like that, just give them a little snip off. And that should stop it from fraying. So you do that to all the sides. Cool, right, so we got two reds for the top, two purples for the bottom. And what we're going to do now is attach these onto the inner shell. Right, guys, so just a little more info on these little tabs. These are basically going to go, once they've been folded in half, uh, I'm going to saw these onto uh, each corner here. Uh, about an inch from the top, so when I'm ready to actually rock, sew it all around the edge, uh, I'll fold it over like this. Then I'll create a little channel which you can run cord all the way down. And then you've got little red tabs sticking at the end here which you can attach to some little prussics. That edge is going to be folded and sewed. This edge is going to go, the tab's going to go like that. And this edge is going to come over the top. It'll look all nice and neat, sticking out like that. Right then guys, so the way I've sewn it is I've just done like four bar tags. You can see that there. Four bar tags and then I've just run like a straight stitch. Whoosh, three times up there as well, just to give it a little bit of strength. Doesn't need to be crazy strong, uh, so don't worry if you don't put in them straight lines, but there we go. So I'm gonna do three more of them on each, woo, let's focus me in. I'm gonna do three more of them on each corner. And then we'll move on to the hardest bit, which is going to be actually sewing the other side of the baffles onto the outer fabric. Um, but we'll get to that when we get to it. Right guys, we're pretty much getting there now. So I've done the four tabs on each corner, as you can see. Red for head, and down this end, purple for the foot. Now then, what we're going to do now is we're going to lay our outer shell over the top of this. We're going to sew all the way down one side uh, and then we're going to start attaching all the baffles on. So let's get to it. So what I've done here guys is I've marked out 7 inches in between each one of these gaps. Uh, so it runs all the way from one end to the other. So that when I'm sewing it on later I've got a line to go off. Hopefully the chalk won't rub off as I'm sewing otherwise it might get a bit trickier. The reason I'm not doing it 6 inches again and doing it 7 this time is because you want to obviously create some sort of like space inside those baffles. If it was six inches that, again here, and I sewed it all together, there'd be no space for the downness expand uh, to give you that warm toasty goodness. So, seven inches here, six inches on the other one, and then we'll join them together, see what happens. Right, so what I'm doing now is I'm laying my outer shell over the top of the inner shell. I'm just getting it all lined up, and this time I'm definitely gonna be using pins because I need to try and keep this uh, one inch gap down this side because we're going to be creating a channel by folding the purple over onto the black and sewing down and that channels for the shot cord to go through uh, which attaches to your suspension on your hammock Right then, so I've been a bit of a bell end and I've sewn on the wrong side for the outer shell so I'm having to redo the lines again all along this side so now I'm going to have lines on that side and lines on that side which doesn't really matter that much, it's chalk It'll probably rub off, but it's just a bit of a ball, eh, to be honest. Having to ping all the lines out again. Hey ho, live and learn. Right then guys, so what I've got here is my little setup of how I'm actually sewing these baffles on. So like I said, it's probably going to be the most trickiest bit. So what I'm doing, or what I think is probably going to be best, is... I don't know if you can see it there, but basically, I've got my bit of uh, bug netting. Just here, if you can see it. Uh, I'm laying it just pretty much straight down and all the rest of the excess fabric, the purple stuff, is going to have to fit through this side of the sewing machine. Um, and I've got all my chalk lines out to the left. And basically what I'm doing is just following that chalk line which I've made all the way down there uh, with this bug net. Again, this is going to be have to sew like two or three inches adjust, sew through the inches adjust. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Right guys, so I've finished sewing all the baffles, uh, I've then sewn a channel up the other side and now I'm going on to sealing up the bottom. So then pretty much all I need to do after this is stuff it with some down. So what I'm doing down the bottom here, just so you can all see, if you can 
can see there. So what I'm doing is I'm folding because obviously this black material uh, is seven inches and the purple material is six inch baffles. So I'm folding sort of like pleats in the edge, edge of each of these. And then I'm gonna sew a straight line across the black. And then I'm going to fold the purple over just like I did the channels earlier uh, to make another channel down the bottom. So then we'll have three channels, one on this side, one on this side and one down this side here so three sides all sealed up then what we'll do is we'll lift it up stuff down in through the top uh, and yeah sew the top up and I think then ready to rock right guys so I've actually finished the entire undercoat now apart from stuffing it down and sewing up the last channel up here so I've got a channel that runs all the way down this side here and this side and along the bottom which I'm going to run shot cord through uh, so I can cinch down either end uh, and also so this can slide up and down my suspension which you'll see later on. Uh, now what I'm going to do, well what I've done is attach like a washing line thing up, I've connected the loops which you've already sewn in uh, onto it using some little s -beaners. Uh Now what we're going to do is grab our bags of down, carefully try and take handfuls of this out, pop it into each separate compartment. I'll show you the compartments here. So that's my little setup that I've got. So that each one of these compartments, just need to fill fuller down. Whee! If you wanted to be more accurate, you could weigh you down, uh, but I'm not that bothered uh, about specifically what temperature it's going to drop down to. Uh, if it's too cold, I'll put more down in because I've got some spare left over. But what I'm doing guys is I've got myself a little buff just to put on because these feathers and down stuff uh, will go everywhere and it's quite bad if you start inhaling it. Uh, you'll be coughing and spluttering for days so safety first. I'll come around this side so you guys can see. Literally just taking handfuls, shoving it in. Getting it all over the floor. So this dry bag might actually fit down inside one of the big chambers. Fingers crossed. Yeah, buddy. times easier so if you can dry bags that are quite small right then guys so pretty much done now uh, I ended up using the entire duvet just because uh, some of the pockets were just up like this high and others were really low down here uh, but now I've used the entire duvet and if you can see that they're all pretty poofed up to about halfway full but obviously once I uh, lay it out in my hammock give it a shake down all that uh, down will spread out so all it's left to do now is zip up the top and, not zip, sew up the top even. And then yeah, create that last channel and then thread through some shot cord to attach to the hammocks. Let's do it. All the down's being shoved to that end. It's nice and poofed up down there. So you know there's tons of downy goodness. Uh, right then, so at this end what I'm gonna do exactly the same as I did before is I'm gonna pin it and pleat it all the way along. Cause again, like, I said before the inner shell is six inches the outer shell is seven inches uh, and you just need to make them line up together after doing that i'll sew one big line across and then finish off that last channel right then so under quilt is done looking pretty sexy that's both sides there right then so that's the shock cord running up each side going down the length of it and towards the end so all that's left to do is Tie these together, work out how long I need it to be. It's going to be different on every person's hammock. So just kind of guess. You want to leave enough uh, room so you can actually stretch it up onto the ends of your hammock without it becoming too tall. Oh, look. Wow, turtle appears. Doodly -doodly 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 -doodly. 
What are you doing, Jelly? Hmm? Huh? So what I did was thread the cord through the safety pin. Uh, that way I've got something solid I could push through the entire channel. Uh, and we're pretty much done. So I'm gonna pop my hammock up as best I can and attach this onto it and see what it looks like. Right then, so I've cut my loop, probably a bit too big, but better to be bigger than smaller. You loop it around like this. You push the head of the loop through the hole, pull it back over the top again. Do the same again, through there. Pull it back over the top again. We'll go for three here. After you've done that three times, you thread the two tail ends through that loop at the top. Try and keep it on neat and tidy and just pull. You should end up with something that looks like that. And then all I do is attach this end with an overhand knot onto the loop and we're ready to rock. Finished under quilt. It's took a while but I'm well happy with how much it blows up. I reckon it's going to be super toasty. Right, yeah, so basically how it works, you've got the elastic cord running through each side there, uh, attached onto here, uh, which has got a little prussic loop right here. So you can adjust this up and down wherever you want it to be, uh, and that just stops it sliding up and down the actual elastic. At either end here, a little cinching cord so that you can get rid of this big hole here, tighten that up to stop any air and stuff getting inside. And again, you've got that down at the bottom end over here as well. Well, uh, as you can see, it doesn't pack down crazy small, but I'm going to be warm and toasty. Right then, dudes and dudettes, that's pretty much it done, completed. Next step is really just to go outside and test it out, see if it's actually nice and warm and toasty. Looks like it's going to be plenty, plenty thick enough though. Right then, so uh, if you enjoyed this little DIY tutorial, hopefully it's been self-explanatory and you can actually get out there and make yourself one of these Bombay bad boys yourself. Um, but yeah, leave us a like, comment down below in the doobly-doo if you've got any questions and stuff, and subscribe. Oh, and if you want to, head over here to this little intro video, it's a little bit about myself uh, and what this whole channel is. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. Just bump me.